Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a good old reading vlog. I haven't done a reading vlog in a minute. I haven't posted a video in a minute, but I'm here, I'm back, and I'm excited. I'm gonna be trying to read two books in two days, which I feel like I can do. I feel like I picked out some rather short books, so I'm gonna <coughs> nail this. I'm gonna <coughs> pound it. But before we get into it, today's video has a sponsor. Today's video is being sponsored by Bookfinity. If you don't know anything about Bookfinity, let me fill you in. It's the perfect platform for book lovers like you and me who are constantly looking for that bookish goodness. Bookfinity gives you the chance to take a quiz that will give you specific book recommendations that align with your specific reading tastes. Finding book recommendations that are like very specific to your reader needs can sometimes be a bit challenging, but this website makes it simple by pairing your answers to the quiz with solid recs that give you exactly what you're looking for. The quiz goes through a series of questions from book cover preferences to things that you enjoy the most in your life, what type of person you are, and through these various questions it'll provide you with the type of reader that you are and then also will give you book recommendations. I low-key loved finding out the type of reader that I am through this website, which I'm going to tell you what type of reader I am. It gave me the young at heart reader, which honestly, that tracks for me. It says you're young at heart, unique, lighthearted, and loyal, you march to the beat of your own drum, and you're okay with that. Ain't that the truth? Your fun-loving spirit and Peter Pan attitude make you the life of the party! Yay, yay, yay! That nailed down my reader type perfectly. It also definitely picked up on my taste as a reader, because not only did it give me fresh recommendations, but it gave me books that I've read before from books like Champion, Mockingjay, and One of Us is Next, so it definitely like knew my taste, but then also gave me books that I've never heard of before. I highly recommend checking out bookfinity.com. I will leave a link to it down below in the description. Specifically, I want to know your guys' reader types. So go take the quiz, find out your reader type, and then come back and share with me down below in the comments what reader type you got. I need to know. Also, let me know down below in the comments some of the book recommendations it gave you, because I want to know that as well. Again, thank you to bookfinity.com for sponsoring today's video, and again, I will leave a link to bookfinity.com down below in the description. Go and check them out. The first book that I'm going to be reading, the book that I'm going to be reading today is Family of Liars, which is a book that I have a bit of mixed feelings about going into it. This is a prequel to We Were Liars. Where is We Were Liars on my shelf? I know it's like right behind me. Maybe? Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, here it is. I knew it. It's the prequel to this book, which, mind you, I loved this book. I love We Were Liars. I know it has a lot of hype behind it, and a lot of people don't like it. I personally really enjoyed it. I loved the shock factor of it. I loved just the writing style of it. I loved everything about it, which has you probably wondering why I'm iffy about there being a prequel, and that's because I just feel like there is literally no need for this. Literally no need, and yet I'm going to be reading it. But I'm just so curious. I have to know what goes down this book. I don't even know like what this book is about. Obviously it's probably about the family from this book, like maybe some of their history or something, which is that gonna be interesting? I don't know. A windswept private island off the coast of Massachusetts, a hungry ocean churning with secrets and sorrow, a fiery addicted heiress, an irresistible unpredictable boy, a summer of unforgivable betrayal and terrible mistakes. <gasps> The reason why I feel like this book like really just kind of knocked it out of the park was because of the shock factor in the end and I just don't think that you can replicate that with this book. I don't even think it's a good idea to replicate that kind of shock factor. In fact, if this book does have that kind of element of surprise where it just completely catches you off guard, I'll be a bit disappointed. I'm already going in skeptical. I need to like drop my attitude surrounding this book and just like go into it and just hope for the best, but it's just really hard for me when I just don't think that this is necessary. Which, again, why am I reading it if I don't think it's necessary? It's because I'm just so freaking curious. I need to know. Is it trash? Is it fantastic? Is it gonna make me angry when I get to the end and realize that it just didn't need to happen? Probably, but... I'm gonna go into it and just just hope hope for the best. I say as I'm being super freaking skeptical right now. The second book that I'm gonna be reading, which I'll be reading tomorrow, is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This is the book explosion book of the month for the month of... July, but our live show is in August. I honestly haven't heard great things about this book, but I feel like with V.E. Schwab, her books are just so vastly different that not everybody is going to like every book that she releases. I typically lean towards the side of like, 
loving every book she releases, so we'll see. We'll see how I feel about it. If you guys have read either of these books, let me know your thoughts on them down below in the comments. I think I'm gonna do a bit of a book haul right now. I'm just gonna do like a fast run through of some books that I picked up recently because I don't feel like filming a full-fledged book haul, but I did get some new books recently. I got The Supernatural Society. This is a middle grade book. I opened it and I was like, holy crap, the font is so huge. It's so big. I don't remember middle grade font being this big, but I'm honestly okay with it because I'll probably read it really fast and it'll make me feel really good about myself. <laughs> it'll make me feel like the fastest reader ever, but I've been in this like mood for Halloween, even though it's August. I am in the mood for the spooky vibes, so bring on the spooky vibes, please. I need all of them. This is The Book of Night by Holly Black. This is the Illumicrate edition with the beautiful black edges. I've actually already read this book. I felt like okay about it. It wasn't like the best thing ever, but dang, this book is a stunner. Look at the aesthetics, my people. It's so good. Then I got Semi Famous by Josh Sunquist. I read his other book, We Should Hang Out Sometime, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm looking forward to getting into this one. I believe this is another like memoir ish style book. So, is it though? Actually, it is memoir y. It, it, it is memoir ish. It, it's. It's got memoir vibes. <laughs> then I got this book, which I believe is what they call a light novel, if I remember correctly. It's called The Long, Long Goodbye of the Last Bookstore. The book actually kind of pairs two of my favorite things. It's got a bookstore element to it. It's got a grief element. Essentially, this like bookstore owner dies and it seems like the town is going to be losing its last bookstore. But then this high schooler comes in and is like, hey, I'm the one that's inheriting this and we're gonna keep it running. But he's obviously a high schooler. So how's that gonna go? I don't know. So today, as I'm reading Family of Liars, I I've also got to run some errands, so I'm gonna bring you guys along with me. I need to go get boba, because that is a need, that is a must. I need to go to the dollar store to get some props for something, which I'll tell you guys about later. I need to go thrifting, because I just need to. I've been in like a really thrifting mood lately, but that's because I found some like, top-notch pieces that I've been really happy with. Usually I find good things from the thrift store when I'm just like spur of the moment going where I'm just like unexpectedly going to the thrift store, but when I plan to go to the thrift store, I typically don't find anything, so. I don't know if I'm gonna be finding any pots of gold today, but hopefully I do. Then I need to go to the library and return these books. Uh, I did not read any of them, but I checked out three of the books from the library. I did start one of them and I just felt like it wasn't the right time for me and that is Slate House by David Mitchell. I read like the first two pages and I was just like, eh, I'm not in the mood for you right now. I feel like I could eventually be in the mood to read it, but just not right now. I also checked out The Poet X, which I really, really, really want to read. I just didn't get around to it. And then The Stranger in the Woods, which I think I just kind of picked this one up on a whim. I think it's a true story. The extraordinary story of the last true hermit. Is it a true story? Update. It is in fact a true story. <laughs> anyway, I need to return these to the library. They were actually like rechecked out for me because my library is amazing where if you don't return the books by the first due date, they'll just automatically recheck them out for you unless one of them is like on hold or something. But I definitely meant to get them in on their first due date. The due date just kind of went over my head and I also was like for sure set on the fact that I was going to read all of these books. I was like, I'm going to check out all these books and I'm going to read all of them. Did I read any of them? No, absolutely not. But that's all right. That's okay. <laughs> all right, let's get started with our day. Let's get to reading. I'm very intrigued to see how I end up feeling about this one. <laughs>
It's reading update time. I got to page 159. Bada bing, bada boom. In a lot of ways, this is very, very, very similar to We Were Liars, which I know is so annoying for me to continue to like make the comparison, but like I just can't help myself. I'm sorry. And I'm not gonna spoil We Were Liars in any way, but what I will say is that We Were Liars had this almost like haunting tone to it, eerie vibe to it, and Honestly, I'm not mad at it, even though it is like very similar to We Were Liars in that way. Can't say I'm mad, can't say I hate it. I thought I was gonna be a hater, but apparently I'm not hating it so far. In this book, we follow a girl who is dealing with grief and it appears that everyone around her, everyone in her life has already kind of processed and moved on from that loss. But she herself is still kind of unpacking the grief and just dealing with it. And it's confusing for her to still be in that place when everyone around her has just kind of like moved past it. And honestly, that aspect of it is killing it. Like I'm really enjoying reading about her still being in that place when everybody around her has kind of moved on. Cause like, I, I relate to that. Like when I lost my grandma, like I, I still to this day feel like I'm still processing her death. And it's been years since my grandmother passed away. I think I was like 17, maybe 16 when my grandma passed away. I'm old now, so it's been a minute since she passed away, but like I still, like it still just feels like it happened yesterday. And I still get emotional about it from time to time. And I feel like I will never fully comprehend her death. I know I was a cranky butt going into this book. I accept that fact but maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I don't know, I have to get deeper into it. I will say that my one complaint is that I feel like it needs more like of a plot. The plot needs to thicken a bit, but truth be told, We Were Liars itself didn't have the strongest plot in my opinion. It was more just like haunting vibes and ended with a bang, ended with a boom. But the writing so far is excellent, very reminiscent of We Were Liars again, not to make a comparison again, but it has that thing where it has these like very striking prose that just completely catch you off guard. And I love that style of writing. <laughs> There's like recipes in the back of this book for like different things you can make to eat and drink while you're reading this book. And it makes me want to just like run to the store and make one of these snacks while I'm reading. So I might do that after I update you guys on what I've done so far today. Hey, hey, hey. I did end up going thrifting. I did not get anything. I did see some like spicy pieces, but nothing that I was like, I need, I need, I need, I need. So I just, you know, had self-control, said no, 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 and moved on. Then I went to the dollar store. I got a bunch of flowers. I'm doing this like Instagram reel series where I like take pictures inspired by book covers, essentially. I got these flowers because I wanted to do a recreation of Gallant. But then I got home and looked at the cover of Gallant again, at least the US cover of Gallant. This cover right here has no flowers on it, but the UK cover, this cover right here has flowers on it. So I might recreate this cover, but I don't know. I might also try to do something with this. So I also so I got some red acrylic paint. I think I already have black acrylic paint. So if I wanted to do something in this vein, I probably could. I actually have an idea now that I see this cover up close. I'll save the flowers for another project because I'm sure that I'll need them at some point. But yeah, this is just like a fun little thing that I'm doing. I feel like it's just like helping me stretch my mind creatively and like make something in a different format. So I have one up for sure right now on my Instagram if you want to go and check it out. I did like a cover recreation for the Forest of Stolen Girls. So go and check that out on my Instagram. Add Jesse the Reader. More to come. I'm working on more. Brainstorming over here. So the thing about me in the dollar store is that I will go and I will just buy everything. Everything. Things that I don't need. It's like when you go into Target and you just are going in for one thing and you just can't help yourself. You just snatch, 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 snatch. That's what happens with me in the dollar store. And it, it's harder too because it's cheap. Everything's a dollar twenty-five. Hello. Hello. I love a deal. I love a steal. Doing a Dollar Tree haul here. So I got some pineapple tidbits. I love pineapple. So I got some pineapple tidbits. I got a brush because I might need it for, you know, when I paint because I'm such a painter. And then I got some snacks. Let's do a little taste test. You know, do a little taste test. I got these crunchy rice rolls. These are the hot and spicy chili kind. I used to get the regular kind on the regular, but then I kind of like burnt myself out because I was having them like every day for like 12 weeks. And I was like, okay, that's enough. But I never had the hot and spicy chili kind. So we're going to try this. I hope it tastes good. I really like spicy stuff, but I'm not the kind of person that can like hide the fact that it's spicy. Like I still think it's spicy. My, my mouth is burning. I need a drink on the side to like help with the spice, you know, but I feel like this can't be that spicy. We'll see. Okay. Hmm. 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 At first it just tasted like the regular rice roll, but then there was just like this hint. And I mean 
hint. Minuscule amount of heat that came with it. It tastes good. I'll eat the rest probably. This is really random. Not to be like quirky, weird, random. I've seen these my whole life and I've never tried them. They're marshmallow circus peanuts. I'm not gonna lie, they're they're really freaking hard. Like I was feeling them as I was in line. I was like, hmm, I hope a tooth doesn't come out with one of these. That would be a nightmare. I'm already due for a root canal and I've been avoiding it, so. Um, you know, I don't hate it, don't love it. Also not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. It kind of like dissolves in your mouth. Would never buy them again, but I'm glad I tried them. And finally, I got Scooby-Doo graham cracker snacks. We used to have these at my first job, which was at an after-school care program. And we had these for snack time and they were bomb. They were so fire, they were so good, so. You see how I just opened that? I'm a nightmare. Dressed like a daydream, baby. <laughs> We're gonna see if these hold up. That's what they look like. They look like literal dog treats. I don't know. What's the expiration date? November 19th, 2022. They're a little stale. A little stale tasting. They still taste pretty good. They just taste stale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna spend the rest of my night reading. I'm gonna be finishing Family of Liars. I only have like probably 150 pages left. I think I can do that. I should be able to bang that out. I might go to the store and get ingredients for one of the snacks that she has listed in the back. Cause I feel like that'd be fun to like have the snack on hand while I'm reading the book. Eh, 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 eh. All right, I'll update you guys later. I went to the store and I got the ingredients I need to make the little trail mix thing that is in the back of this book. It's a snack mix to make George's special. So I'm gonna try to make it. I'm gonna make just like a smaller version of it. I think this is like calling for like a big tub of the mix. It's kind of random like ingredients list. So we've got frosted mini wheats, which I love this cereal. One of my favorites, so I'm excited to have that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then uh, it calls for some pretzels, which as you can see, I already started it in on them on the way back from the grocery store because I was needing a little snack. So I was like, pretzels, let's go. And it calls for marshmallows, the mini kind, then the semi-sweet chocolates. Let's put it together, do a little combination. I'm glad this is a simple recipe because things get too complicated, I'm out. I'm out of there. Just gonna do a little bowl. It feels like such a random mixture. And I think she even said, the author herself said like, I would never eat this. She said, I will confess, it does not sound good to me, but teenagers I know strongly disagree. So have at it. So we'll, we'll see. These pretzels are freaking good. Cereal. Ow. That cut my skin, holy. Put a little bit too much of something in here because it's just overflowing. Mix it together as best I can in this small bowl. <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We of course have to do a little bit of a taste test. I wanna make sure that I get every ingredient on my hand. That's a lot that I'm gonna show into my mouth. Hmm, it's good. <laughs> but it's very dry. It's just like coating my mouth in dryness. So that's the only downside, but it's yummy. I eat this, I'd snack on this, and I'm going to while I read. So let's go. finished Family of Liars, the results are in. I think that I am just kind of in the middle with this book. Like, I didn't hate it as much as I thought I was going to. Like, I thought I was going to despise every bit of it. That was not the case. There was a lot of elements in here that I really enjoyed. It does bring up a lot of dark topics. Sexual assault is something that is a big thing in here, so know that before going into it. I didn't know that before going into it. There are probably other trigger warnings that I can't think of right off the top of my head, but I will leave a list of them down below in the description for this book. I liked the fact that we do get to see a little bit more of the reason as to why the family is the way that they are in We Were Liars. So in some ways, this story does add a layer to that story. And I wish this book didn't have like, 
Uh, I don't know. I'm trying not to spoil anything. I don't want to say too much. Uh, I don't know. I just, I felt indifferent about this one. But at the same time, there were things that I liked about it. And I'm, ju I'm just in the middle. I am in the middle of the road. That's all I can say. I feel like I'm just word vomiting. And I hope I made sense. Let me know down below in the comments, though, if you guys have read this book. Because I need to hear your thoughts on it if you've read it. Those are my rambly thoughts. I'm sorry for being all over the place. <laughs> It's the next day and I am tired. I didn't get much sleep last night, but I got my coffee, got my fuel, and I'm ready to take on another day full of reading. I'm actually very excited to read today because yesterday was just so much fun, just like reading through A Family of Liars. And today I'm gonna be hyper fixated on Gallant by V.E. Schwab. In this book, we follow a girl named Olivia who knows nothing about her past life. All that she has of her past is this journal that used to be her mom's. She's currently attending this boarding school situation, and one day she receives a letter from Gallant, which appears to be her home. But when she gets there, she finds that nobody was expecting her, and it seems like nobody wants her there. But Olivia is determined to stay there and learn more about her past, learn more about her mother, and learn more about her father. This has been one of my most highly anticipated releases of the year and I'm just now getting around to it because I'm a bit behind this year. When am I not behind? I am just always behind in life and you know what? That is okay. I move at my own pace. If you didn't know, I love V.E. Schwab. She's one of my favorite authors and I collect her books. So let me flex on you and share some of my editions of Gallant. First up here we have the Illumicrate edition. Illumicrate never disappoints. I love this cover of Gallant. It's beautiful and I love the in papers and just everything about the aesthetics. Next up here I've got the Waterstones edition of Gallant. Honestly, every edition that came out of this book just did a really fantastic job of like making it beautiful and this one does not disappoint. I think my favorite one though has to go to Owl Crates. I just really like the dark shade of the cover. I think it just works really well. And that's it for me flexing on you guys. Let's get to reading. <laughs> But the truth is, death is everywhere. Death comes for the roses and the apples. It comes for the mice and the birds. It comes for us all. Why should death stop us from living? Update time, update time. I went to the park and did some reading, and then I came home and did some reading, and then I went out and did some shopping. We will talk about the shopping in a minute. But I got pretty far into Valent. I got to part four, I think. Yeah, I'm entering part four, and I think there's only six parts, so I'm nearly finished with this book. It's moving very, very fast. And I just have to say that I am loving this book, and I am surprised that I am loving this book, because when this one first dropped, I know that there were a lot of people that were very disappointed by this book. And I don't want to invalidate those feelings to the people that had like mixed feelings about this book but I am loving every bit of it and I don't know if it's because I went into it with such low expectations or because I'm just so familiar with V.E. Schwab's work that like I know that every book she releases is not going to be like the last so if you are picking this book up after reading Addie LaRue and you're like new to V.E. Schwab's books then you'll probably be a little bit disappointed because this is nothing like Addie LaRue. There are definitely like elements that run throughout each of her books that are like familiar and kind of like serve as nostalgia for some of her past works. But with each book that they release, it's something different, something unique. This book is really interesting too because I feel like it's not a book that I would normally like because it is one of those books where it kind of falls into the lane of like just vibes. We've got characters who I feel like we're not really kind of going super deep with. We've got a plot but it's not like super strong per se. It's more so just like eerie vibes aesthetics, spookiness, but I, I'm here for it. I'm really enjoying it. There are some themes that are being explored that I'm really enjoying and I'm excited to see how they are executed towards the end of the book. This is one of those situations that I feel like puts me in like a weird place because it's like the majority of people who have read this book and reviewed it right when it came out didn't like it and I 
am loving it, and so it just, like, makes me feel weird. Like, I just don't like being in the minority, I guess, which I don't even know if that's really the minority. I'm sure that a lot of people did enjoy this, but I just feel like I more so saw negative things about this when it first came out. The book has lots of awesome drawings throughout it, and I love the fact that we're following a character that doesn't speak, a character that is mute, and has to use ASL in order to communicate. I think I've realized that I'm starting to enjoy this kind of genre of fantasy where it's, like, soft fantasy, which this one I would say is more so like gothic horror fantasy kind of thing. Light horror, not like crazy horror, light horror. But I really like kind of that gentle fantasy where it's not like a super complex plot that you're following. You're not following too many characters where it's hard to like remember everybody. And while there is a plot, it's kind of just like chill. I'm, I'm really enjoying it and I'm excited to get deeper in and finish it today. Like I said, I did do some shopping. This book is putting me in like a fall time mood. Like I am just ready for it to be Halloween. Like I am full fledged in a Halloween mood. Mood. Not only because of this book, like this book is not the only thing that's like inspiring me to be in a Halloween mood, but just in general, I want it to be Halloween. So I went and did some Halloween decor shopping because I've decided that this year I'm going to go all out when it comes to decorating my house with the Halloween vibes. So I'm going to do a quick haul. I'm not going to like go into too much detail on the things that I got because I don't want to bore you guys and I'm sure you guys are like, bestie, it's August. Let's wait till October to be excited about Halloween, but I just can't help myself. I got these two Snoopy mugs. We've got Vampire Snoopy and Mummy Snoopy. Obsessed. I don't even know what this creature is, but I saw it. I wanted it. I got it. He needs a name. What shall we name him? Are you joking? Hello? Do you see the little witch hat on that? I had to have the one that has a pumpkin on it too. Duh. A skull globe. Hello. Cat. Skeleton. Bobbleheads. I got their ghosty friend last year, so I had to get these two this year. A little witch hat. Two skull mugs because I couldn't just have one. I needed two. Little pumpkin dude and cat lady with their little hanging legs. How perfect is that? It's perfect. Ghost puppy, anybody? <laughs> I kiss you. Okay, then the final and best thing that I got today, the thing that I am shooketh over, the thing that I lost my mind over when I saw it in the store, this. It's the Ghost Riders Antique Bookstore. Let me take it out of the box so you can see it. How freaking dope is this? We're gonna do a zoom in on this because you just gotta see how amazing it is. Like, I am obsessed. It does light up as well. I just haven't put the bulb in, obviously, because I just took it out of the box, but this is my favorite thing I got today. I'm so happy. I might have overdone it today. I'm having a bit of buyer's remorse, but it's okay. Halloween is on its way. It's time to get back to reading. I'm really interested to see how this story comes to a close. I think I only have two parts left here at the end, so I'm looking forward to getting through that. So let's get back to reading. running out of light, so we're gonna work with what we've got here, but I just finished Gallant, and I was delighted by it. I really enjoyed this book. I definitely understand why a lot of people might have been disappointed by this book. It's a book where there's, like, not a lot of, like, surprising elements. There's, like, one big surprise towards the end, but other than that, it's just kind of more of, like, a gentle plot. Like, things just kind of progress in a way where it's kind of expected. Not expected, per se, but, like, it's just... Nothing is dropped on your lap with shock factor, which I'm okay with. I was into that kind of style. I really liked that kind of gentle element of it because I feel like a lot of books these days are that way where it's just like, bam, plot twist, bam, plot twist, bam, shock, bam, explosion. And sometimes it's nice to just have a book where it just like slowly moves its way through the story. And I really liked that aspect of it. I also just love the E. Schwab's writing style. I know that I could talk about that for days on end because I love it. It's so poetic and nice and just detailed in like a flowery way, but not in a flowery way where it's too much, you know? It's not like you're falling into a rose bush. That's a bad example, but <laughs> I also love the themes that were explored throughout this one. Obviously, we've got the theme of death and there was a really beautiful like tie-in with death at the end that I really appreciated. I can't talk about it because it's kind of spoilery. And then also there's this idea of home and 
how home is what you make it. Home is not necessarily like where your blood relatives are or where you grew up. It's what you make it. It's who you want in your life. It's the place that makes you the happiest. And I just liked seeing that theme kind of be brought up throughout this book and explored. Because I think that that's a message that a lot of people need to be reminded of because you can be in situations that are just like really tough. But you have to remember that that tough place doesn't necessarily have to be your happy place. It doesn't have to be your home. Your home can be anywhere anywhere that makes you happy. So I really loved that. Overall, I would give this book a four out of five stars. I can't sit here and say that it's perfect. It definitely has some flaws. My one big critique is that I just felt like there were aspects that needed a little bit more fleshing out. Specifically in terms of characters, I feel like this could have been a book where I fully latched myself onto these characters and I just never really got to that point because I felt like we never really got that deep with them. And that's more so with the side characters because I felt like we did get to know our main character, Olivia, quite a bit, but more so the supporting cast, I felt like I needed more from them and a little bit more from the plot as well. I wouldn't have minded that, but again, I also really liked the plot. I really liked the fact that it was like slow moving and didn't develop in a way that was like so shocking every turn we took, essentially. That is it for today's reading vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you guys have read these two books, Family of Liars and Gallant, let me know your thoughts on them down below in the comments. I definitely want to hear from you guys because I feel like these are books that have like mixed feelings all around, so I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Again, thank you to bookify.com for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to go and check them out. I will leave a link to them down below in the description. Go and take the quiz and tell me what type of reader you are. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye. A summer unforgivable. A summer of unforgivable. A summer of unforgivable. And in the semi. And in the. I'm running. I'm running out of light. I'm running out of light. But I just, just, just. <laughs>